anyone else. So, um, so I still am. I'm working on um, short films with some of the other women, but um, yeah, this one. Max is unlucky. And, and, and lucky, are you happy with the way it came out? I'm living. <laughs> I'm not going to have any success getting it. Okay. We well, loved it. It's it okay. Awesome. Thank you. A round of applause for, for coming here on the uh, Let's go to the audience because uh, obviously you guys are really a uh, very engaging audience and uh, I want to give you guys an opportunity while we're here to ask as many questions as we can fit in. So does anybody want to start with, does anybody even have a question or uh, up front right here? Was there a point where... You Whatever know, you didn't see this because she edited out, I damn sure did tell her to get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> Trust and believe that. Go, sure, of course. I just want to know, what do you want people to take away from this film or really understand about you? Did you feel like was made in the film or wasn't made? Like, what do you want everybody here watching you like as a spectacle? I'm going to repeat it just because not, maybe not everybody heard, but the question in the front here was, what do you want, what would you like everybody to take away about you, and what would you like them to have learned about you? Uh, what to take away about me is I had a reason to be angry, but now that everybody sees the reason why I was angry, I'm not angry as much, but to have a little clue of why I was angry, maybe they could be of some help and not judgmental, and understand more than like, that bitch just got an attitude, instead of, now I know why she's so hurt and why she's so angry. Mm. Jim? Yeah, um, Lauren Lucky, um, thank you very much for sharing this life. Um, it really touched me. Uh, and I think as many people do judge you or judge other people by the way they look and their attitude and what Laura has done and you allowed her to do is bring that inside out. So thank you. I wanted to ask a question about Steve James. When did he become involved and did Laura, did Lucky ever meet him? The question is, uh, for those who didn't hear, is the executive producer, Steve James, who directed a number of document documentaries, including recently The Interrupters. I don't know if you've heard of it. And before that, Hoop Dreams is a pretty well-known picture. So uh, Laura, being a first-time yeah. director, how did you swing that? Yes, um, I am very excited to talk about Steve. I also want to shout out, first of all, the entire crew. Um, that is here of so many amazing people um, that helped. Hi, amazing people. Home. Thank you for coming. Um, no, I really want to thank you guys, and I would say all your names, but you know who you are, and I had some very dear collaborators, so thank you guys. Um, and um, Steve, um, I met, I guess, I met him um, in 2012, and we had a great conversation, and he was really encouraging to me um, when, because you know he knew that I had a very difficult subject, and Lucky um, is a complicated woman and not easy um, for a lot of people to root for. And he felt like there really need to be more difficult character portraits that aren't just about sort of exceptional heroes who overcome, but um, just real people that are going through real things. Um, it took me a while to follow up with him because I wanted to wait until I had a rough cut of the film. Um, and so when I finally had a rough cut, I asked him if he remembered me, he said yes, and I sent him mm -hmm. um, a copy and he gave amazing feedback and ultimately came to New York to visit um, in early 2013 and um, gave me more feedback and offered to be the EP and has been a great supporter. And, and Lucky met him in Toronto at our premiere. And there's a we picture of you too, right? Yeah. Still got pictures of that white man. <laughs> uh, there, I think you had a, yes, yeah, right in the back there, yes. <laughs> Comment. Uh, Comment. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Laura. Awesome. Thank you. I thought the relationship between the sisters was just incredible. Mm -hmm. I saw it as a story of great love. 
And I love the way that they related. It was just so brilliant. And it just touched my heart. Thank you, Lucky. And thank you, Fantasy. Thank you. But it, it was like show it also I mean it was also show the complexities of that almost every sister is all, all sisters have. You know, it was not just I think No, no, but they're no. It was I meant more that they're just complex relationship. They're not just so easy to define. But yes, you're right. You have a question. <laughs> the question is, where is the bathroom? That was my king asking for the bathroom. You got well, to go 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 the bathroom. Yeah. Somebody escort this young man to the. It's right downstairs, by the way. The answer to the question. Yeah. Next. Uh, any other? Okay, Miss, right here, and then we'll go to you. Yes. Specific. No, no, wait. I have another question. Uh, the making of the movie, the, the, during the making of the movie, is. No, let me wait. By you meeting your father's family, was that doing. No. It was because of the Everything is no. Meeting my father's father, father's side of the family made some type of uh, achievement. Uh, made me feel whole, made me feel like I'm important to something, no. Um, me feeling closer to the people that are in my life made me feel more important, or are they still in my life? No. Um, am I still being homeless, different girlfriends, different aspect of my life, struggling? Um, different girlfriends, Yes. Still struggling? Yes. Still homeless? Yes. Still in a shelter? No. Will I ever go back to a shelter? No. Am I still homeless? And when I leave out of here, do I have a place to go? No. Anything else? No. Yes, in the back. Yes, you. Yes. 
I am being nice, I'm being realistic. People need to know the truth. Just because they watch this film doesn't mean, because I dress in nice clothes and have my fingernails polished doesn't mean I have a home to go to when I leave here. Reality is, this film is to make y'all realize that no matter how good a person look, the pain is still hidden behind the walls that you don't see. I look good on the outside, but a whole lot of hurt is still on the inside. Do I have a roof over my head? No. Reality is, I'm still struggling. Reality is, I still have to smile. So everyone knows that even though in a struggle, you must smile so the next person won't hurt as much as you do. That won't tell the truth about themselves. Let me just get this question in the towards the back, young man. We'll come to you, of course. I wanted to know if you end up uh, meeting Lil Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? If you end up meeting Lil Wayne. No, I didn't meet Lil Wayne, and he's still where he is, and I'm still where I am. Struggling, fame, nobody, something. <laughs> remembered, trying to be remembered. Sending a message, been sending a message. That sending a message like everyone else. I'm still here, he's still noticed. Hello. Things change. Uh, the, the bathroom again? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what? Well, okay, right here. Here. I really liked the theme of the movie. It had somewhat of a cathartic effect. With, I liked the, the strong undertones of strength, the grandmothers, and the hope that was there. And I think that that really made a well-rounded experience for me watching this movie, and I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You're welcome. I wanted to help others, but at the end of the day, it ain't helping me. I'm still laying in nobody's bed, not my own bed, not my own roof. So at the end of the day, this is what I am here for. Sending a message to those that have closed eyes. Just because a person look like this does not mean that they're healthy, that they're happy, that they're secured. You understand that they're satisfied in life. Don't judge a book by cover, whether it's happy or angry. Even the angriest per person in the world can have the most glamorous things in the world. Even the most person that looks like me, that has nothing to show for, not even their own kids, can still smile at the world. I'm still sending a message. I'm not here for anybody to feel sympathy for me. Right. Sympathy is something I never want in life. What I'm trying to send out is a message. Don't judge me because at the end of the day, I'm still going to stand up and fight for myself because ain't nobody fight for me. You understand? I struggle by myself. I feed myself. I clothe myself. And if y'all wasn't sitting in this theater, y'all wouldn't know nothing about me. So I'm just sending a message out to y'all, not for help, because I don't care about help. Nobody helped me ever in life, so I wouldn't expect that. What I'm expecting is those kids that were in my lifetime that's still young before my time, because now I'm too old to be helped. You understand? I can only be helped by you seeing what I experienced and helping others that have a chance to be helped. That's all I want. I don't want nothing. I don't want fame. I don't want all this superstar stuff. When people call me, they be like, hi, superstar. I'm not a superstar. I'm a human. 
And from day one, that's all I wanted to be was somebody, a human. Nobody thought of, of me as a human. They thought of me as a beast, as a stepchild, as a nothing, as a it. The same way I treat other people, I don't want to be treated as that. I want to be treated as a human. The same thing as I would trying to send the message out to other people. Treat as those in need as a human. Because even though I am a bum, and I don't look like a bum, and I don't carry myself as a bum, I treat others that are bums as a human. We all have a right and we all have a voice. It's who want to listen. Laura, can I, ask, can I ask Laura a question too? Um, Laura, as you were shooting the film though, and, and getting to know each other, and obviously creating quite a bond, because I know you, you were very close. Um, well, did you start to feel any sense of, I don't know, that, you know, uh, uh, also like an obligation, uh, maybe that's not the right word, but in, or because of an, um, that emotional attachment, did it change the relationship from filmmaker into something else during that, during the making of the film? Um, Lucky and I have a very close bond, and I guess coming out of journalism, I was always sort of hyper aware of like journalistic ethics and sure. um, not always being able to help in all the ways that maybe I wanted to. Um, but um, you know, it was a delicate dance, and I danced it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And continue to, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, right here. see something worthwhile than the she's telling you. And for that, this human, if it's just me, I respect you for that. I think you're dope. And I don't want you to lose faith in yourself. And I want nothing from you than for you to succeed. You know what I'm saying? We have, we have, thank you for that. And we have time for a couple more questions that I really want to get. You can, right here, go ahead. Thank you. Yes. You talk about um, choosing forgiveness and peace and love. And I just want to know that through this journey of this film and seeing yourself, you know, uh, the story, the, the weight of it, the glory of your life. How are you choosing love today, and and what did this do to get you there? Wake up. Um, I haven't forgiven, and I haven't completely loved because my love still has doubts. And my forgiveness still ends with misery because of those that I, are still in my life that I'm still forgiven for their mistakes that they keep apologizing for. So at the end of the day, no one has recovered from my past or present mistakes that they occurred in my life, present life, past life, still in my life. And everyone's still asking for forgiveness from a person that, damn, can I ask for forgiveness for being born? So at the end of the day, no, I haven't forgiven anyone, forgiven for my life, forgiven for the people that are in it, or trusting anyone that's in it. And, you know, to be blunt, we've just never been discussed in any other premiere that me and Laura has shared together. But I have expressed of only being loyal and trustworthy to her. And so I read a recent article the other day of her expanding her uh, virginity <laughs> with uh, film and filming other women and writing other stories about other people, which kind of broke me because I felt like 
I'm the only real person in Laura's life that's shown her the truth of reality, never hid anything, so I felt like if she left me, it would be like everyone else that left me. Wow. So this was an article about, I guess, um, my first film, and in it I said that I was, I guess, looking forward to making my next film. So that's what she's talking so, about. Oh, so she's fit, maybe, I don't want to put words in her mouth, maybe she felt a little threatened by that? Okay, yeah. It's her to, hers to answer. And listen, everybody, uh, you're a great crowd. And thank you, thank you for your really uh, honest questions and your open uh, Thank you for coming tonight to the New York premiere of Lucky. And uh, we'll hope to see you around the festival.